previous video, we did a interval estimate for a mean. Now let's do an interval estimate for a proportion. So in this setting, we're going to assume that we have a pretty big sample size, so n is large, and we're going to have y denote the number of successes. So y is a binomial random variable. It has parameters n, p, n is known, and then p is unknown, and this is what we're trying to figure out. All right, so our central limit theorem tells us that y minus np divided by root n times p times 1 minus p has an approximate normal distribution with mean 0, standard deviation 1. So it's only an approximate distribution now. Um, we can rearrange this to write y over n minus p divided by the standard error, which is root p times 1 minus p divided by n. So either way you want to write it, it'll have a standard normal distribution approximately. Um, in this case, we'll just assume approximately is good enough as long as we have a pretty large sample size. All right, so then if we want to have an approximate um, 100 times 1 minus alpha percent confidence interval for p, it'll be number of successes divided by n plus or minus the z that corresponds to this level of confidence. So we saw that in the previous video for the confidence intervals for means, times the square root of x over n times 1 minus x over n divided by n. OK, so how did we get there? So remember that this z alpha over 2, we talked about that in the previous video for confidence intervals for a mean. Um, so again, we have that standard normal distribution. If we want to have a 100 times 1 minus alpha percent confidence interval, then we have 1 minus alpha in the middle here. And then we're looking for this z alpha over 2 and negative z alpha over 2. So we go to our table, we go to our q norm, whatever, doesn't matter. We just find those two cutoffs and then we can move forward. All right, so again, we're going to do this in a pretty similar way to the confidence interval for a mean. We're going to use this in its approximate distribution. All right, so if we have chosen this z alpha over 2 to make it so that we have 1 minus alpha in the middle, then we know that the probability that y over n minus p over the standard error is between this cutoff and that cutoff is 1 minus alpha. All right, so we've constructed z alpha over 2 so that we end up getting this 1 minus alpha here. Okay, so now we're going to do a similar thing to the confidence interval for a mean and rework it so that we get this p all by itself. So it'll be just like the previous video. So we'll end up with Okay, so we've rewritten our probability as so. And yes, we do have p in the middle here, but the problem is at this point, we also have p's on these other two parts. So what we're going to do is take it to another level of approximation. So we know that p is approximately the number of successes divided by n. And so we can 
rewrite this to remove the P's from this piece here and this piece here so that we only have a P in the middle here. So now we know that 1 minus alpha is approximately the probability of y over n minus z alpha over 2 times square root of y over n times 1 minus y over n divided by the sample size. And that's less than or equal to p, which is less than or equal to y over n plus z alpha over 2 times the square root of y over n times 1 minus y over n divided by n. So if we take this as one endpoint of our random interval and this as the other endpoint of our random interval, that's how we end up with this confidence interval here. And all of these x's should actually be y's. All right, so again, how we did this is we started with our central limit theorem, and then we decided what level of confidence we wanted to work with. So we chose 1 minus alpha. We drew out our standard normal distribution, put 1 minus alpha in the middle, because 95% of the time, I'm sorry, 1 minus alpha percent of the time, we want it to fall between these two points. Then we go and choose, then we go to our table or R or whatever and find z alpha over 2 and negative z alpha over 2. So then that'll be a number like 1.96 or something like that. We would plug that in, plug that in, and then we would have the probability that y over n minus p divided by the standard error is between negative z alpha over 2 and positive z alpha over 2 is 1 minus alpha. Then we invert this so that we get p alone and we have to approximate this standard error down here using p is approximately y over n. So in the end, we only get an approximate um, confidence interval, but that's the best that we can do. 